I'm gonna say it for the first time in my life properly. Now, obviously, I censored that part because <laughs> that's crazy. The fact that he thought he was gonna get away with this, shame on you, Master Ugwe. I can finally walk a little bit. Look, we getting up, we getting up, we getting up. I ain't gonna lie. Every one of my videos, I'm gonna walk a little bit just so I can get better every day, bro. No cap. But if y'all don't know, bro, YouTube banned me for like a week, bro. I had a strike on my channel. I couldn't upload for a week, but we back though. But while I was down, I was doing some research, bro, and I seen that Master Uguay, his main channel got banned. So in today's video, we finna react to how he became the most hated YouTuber ever, bro. There's the allegations I heard against this man is crazy work, bro. Like, this man, they been calling this man a racist left and right. So I ain't finna yap y'all heads off. Let's see what they talking about. Also, comment, get well soon down in the comments, you feel me, so that I can make a speedy recovery, you feel me? How Master Uwe became the most hated YouTuber. That's tough. Mike Tyson once said, social media made y'all way too comfortable with disrespecting people and not getting punched in the face for it. Lots of people I mean, like to the wild stuff they're able to say online before it gets way too far. No one has really pushed this quite like Master Ugwe. Ugwe is a humongous creator with a face recognized all over social media, but specifically on YouTube. There's a 99% chance that you've seen one of his many, many shorts, even if you don't remember it. He always had a diehard fan base. But hey yo, bro's majestic is a top tier glaze. Like that is crazy. Recently has become one of the most hated creators in the community. How did someone with so many subscribers get? Bro, I'm not gonna lie, this zit right here on this dude's face is real life pissing me off. No cap. Like if y'all didn't peep it, I'd have brought it to y'all attention, bro. I had to see it, so now y'all gotta see it. This nigga should have put a pimple patch or something on his face. Nobody wants to see this humongous ass zit. So hated so fast. Let's cut the bullshit and get right into it. Now, Master Ugwe, whose real name is Omer Sasteem, started his Omer Sasteem. What is that? What what um nationality is that journey where most people start their content journey on TikTok. He discovered that he could do a very good impression of the character Master Ugwe from the movie Kung Fu Panda. And to give him credit, Oh, that's where his name came from. Now the character I never thought about that. Probably because I didn't watch Kung Fu Panda, but that's crazy. He's known to drop absolute gems of wisdom to all of the other characters in the movie and stuff that you could actually apply in real life. And Omer would use this voice to give joking pieces of advice. If she cheated on another man, her coochie is as big as Sudan. And these quotes of wisdom were you. <laughs> That was kind of funny, no cap, that was kind of funny. Usually just funny jokes about getting girls or kissing the homies. Ugwe never really intended the homies? with these videos. He kind of just made them for fun with his friends. But he liked the views that he was getting a lot, and it made him crave more. Soon he started posting more of these types of videos to keep the momentum going. And pretty quickly, he gained a sizable audience on TikTok with over a million followers, along with a pretty strong fan base. I wish I could get a million on TikTok, bro. I get like a thousand views and then my views just completely shut off i don't know if you if tiktok be blackballing me or what but that'd be crazy whenever he posted these quote type of videos they were usually met with comments like yes master but the problem with this type of content is that it can only get milked for so long before it gets pretty dull usually the bit gets tiresome and people move on so ugwe started to try different forms of content to expand on the brand he started creating multiple different tiktok accounts so he can try different styles of videos he tried stuff like following trends using audios and even telling some of his own jokes this way he could show off his own humor and originality and try and be versatile and so basically the moral of the story is he he couldn't he he milked his content views started dropping so he started doing racist stuff to stay relevant is that what is his headed because it seemed like that's what is headed these jokes were not exactly family friendly he would tell the edgiest stuff that he could get away with deeming it as dark humor what do you call an autistic kid with a gun special forces and a lot of these jokes were racist <laughs> y'all gotta give it to him that was kind of funny bro special force <laughs> that's crazy though that's crazy jokes what do you call a chinese kid who was born too early Wong timing obviously with almost any <laughs> Wong timing. 
<laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that is funny, bro. Y'all gotta give it to him. His jokes do be funny. Dark humor jokes, there will always be the types of people that don't find it funny. Long and time. <laughs> a lot of the jokes That's he great. made were targeted at black people. And since Was Africa's national sport, the Hunger Games? Okay. See, now when you bring African people into it, now I hit kind of different, bro. No cap. But, bro, most of Africa not even... Like, most people in Africa don't even be hungry, bro. I don't know who spread it, that stereotype in America, bro, but that not every country in Africa is fucking poor. Uguay himself was not black. People found this in pretty bad taste. That was until he befriended another creator who co-signed these jokes oh, and... Code name Isaac? I mean... Man named Isaac, what's his name? It's something like that. Basically gave him the pass, man like Isaac. Yeah. He himself also built a pretty big reputation for making dark humor jokes, specifically black jokes. Hey, yo! So it only made sense that the two- God doesn't pu punish a person twice. That's crazy work. Two of them would work together. It was like peanut butter and jelly. Bro, Ooh, let, can make let me know down in the comments. Do y'all think being black is like a, a curse? Like, do y'all think that's a bad thing? Because me personally, I love being black, you feel me? I feel like we, feel like black people, I feel like the world wouldn't work without black people. Especially in America. Make all of the black jokes he wanted and he can get away with it with Isaac being in the video. This respectfully helped both of them grow. Granted, most of the people who watched this stuff were just edgy middle schoolers, but views are views. Yet, it still wasn't enough for Uguay. He usually pushed these jokes so that he could get more and more views. However, TikTok guidelines are pretty strict. It's not easy to make offensive jokes on TikTok because most of the time they will actually get removed since they always usually reach the wrong audience. Uguay's videos constantly Constantly got removed all the time for hate speech. But did this stop him? Of course not. He kept posting dark humor because it's what built his audience in the first place. Call me battery saver mode because I automatically get turned on when she's below 50. Wait, what? Okay, buddy. See, nine. This is this is why he started going down the dark path. However, eventually he poked the bear too hard, and his account with 2.7 million followers was permanently banned from TikTok. But again, this did not stop him. After all, Ugly created multiple accounts and was posting on all of them, getting millions of followers from each of them. If an account got banned, he would just create a new one. But TikTok still wasn't really doing it enough for Ugly. He needed more. Ugly's goal was to maximize views while putting in as minimal effort as possible and that's when a light bulb appeared over his head i mean that is a valid strategy maximize views with minimum effort so you get in the most views and you're not exhausting your brain that's smart bro you gotta give it to him and he definitely seen a gap in the market he know controversy pays bro so he just kept making controversial content because he know there's gonna be people in the comments that's gonna respond every time you gotta give it to him the guy is smart Uguay saw accounts that were getting hundreds of millions of views just by posting other people's videos. It was so simple, yet so effective. So he thought to himself, what if he was able to also repost these videos and get the views while adding his own brand and likeness to it? Uguay saw the opportunity and found the perfect place to implement his strategy YouTube. Now at the time, the trend of making the Chad face was very hot. You know, when people would make that giga Chad face when someone does something super alpha. Uge created a new format where he would react to viral videos inserting the Chad face and basically spam post those like crazy. And just like how he did on TikTok, he created multiple YouTube channels where he would be able to post these videos non-stop. He's had all of these channels for nearly three years and some of them- I'm not gonna lie, he must have a lot of time on his hands. He must don't have no girlfriend he must not get no hoes and he must not have a job because where is he finding the time to post all these videos on all these different accounts that's crazy he must have dedicated his life to this shit for barely even a year yet he's gotten over 20 billion views across all of them on average that's around 18 million views a day at least so this was yeah. working way better than tiktok yet it still wasn't enough for uguay their shorts were doing crazy views but it wasn't really enough to establish him as a brand i'm about to say shorts don't pay no money either shorts pay horribly so i don't know why he thought doing youtube shorts would be a smart idea i mean it is an easy way to get quick views and Stuff, but charts don't have no longevity like you could have a million subs from youtube charts and not be known so mm, i would never want to be a youtube charts only creator 
Boogly wasn't really doing anything unique, it was literally just recycled videos and old edgy jokes. So Oogly decided to get into long form videos so that he could really be taken seriously as a creator. He started off by posting try not to laugh meme challenges where he would look at memes and, well, try not to laugh. And he tried making the titles as clickbaity as possible to match his edgy style. And they did pretty well at first, but they slowly started to get less and less views, eventually not even scrapping 20k. He needed something different. Something that that's still tough. wouldn't really require extreme effort but could still get those views. Nothing was off the table. And he noticed that his friend Man Like Isaac was doing a particular style of videos that were doing very, very well. Walking into KFC until I see a black person. Walking into Starbucks until I see a middle-aged white woman. Running until I see something that starts with the letter N. You get the point. The title with the extremely short length of less than 20 seconds was already a joke on its own. But it did massive numbers. And Master Ugwe got another light bulb above his head. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. One time I tried to remake a video like that and that bit flopped so horribly and I instantly knew that was not my calling. And soon he started posting videos with the most clickbaiting title you could possibly think of. My opinion on black people. My opinion on the LGBTQ community. My opinion on Jew. I mean bro, you gotta give him his props though bro. These is all controversial topics. If you, if you see a video title my opinion on black people, and it's a white looking dude in the thumbnail, you're gonna wanna click it. This guy is smart, I gotta give it to him. <laughs> I gotta give it to him. Very clearly leaving you curious as to what he could possibly say. It was exactly. almost impossible not to click on the video to see what it was. But exactly. each video would just him be silent talking over some music to troll the audience. But this still worked pretty well and got him millions of views each time. Ugwe's career was really starting to take off and his face was all over YouTube shorts and on TikTok. So Me at... <laughs> So much so that he back, even bro. landed his first professional influencer boxing match hosted by DAZN, a professional boxing network that works pretty frequently with KSI. Uwe was hyping up this boxing event pretty hard, but when the match- Wait, this how this nigga built? <laughs> no way this nigga on, on the internet talking all this shit about people and he built like a goddamn, the Michelin logo, I mean the Michelin mascot, bro. You know the tired dude? Bro, he's built exactly like him, bro. That's crazy. I was not expecting this nigga to be fat. Match actually started, he didn't even last three whole minutes, not even getting through the very first round. It was topsy turvy, I mean. It's... Yeah. Oh, they go right after it. How about Master Ugwe? Wasting no time. Interestingly enough, uh, Master Ugwe's got the tie truck. Yeah, you can tell he's not no boxer. He's wasting all his stamina. Within the first 30 seconds of the fight, he's not even pacing himself. Done. Then he's just wild swinging. Wild swinging, not protecting his face. Yeah, boxing is not for you, my guy. Now, granted, Uguay is not a boxer, and his opponent was much more experienced than he was. And not to buy shame or anything, but Uguay was clearly not physically ready for a boxing match compared to his opponent. Regardless, <laughs> he still got respect from the community for taking on such a challenge. <laughs> nah, Being brutal. involved in a professional boxing match is huge for any influencer and helped him be certified as official. The match itself has nearly 2 million views on YouTube and also helped with Uguay's status. It still wasn't enough for Uguay. Now, before getting into to content creation, Ugwe was a musician. He Wait, how you know that all this stuff wasn't enough for Master Ugwe? Maybe he just liked making content. Maybe that's what he really liked to do. Why, why he keep making it seem like he constantly want more and more and more? He might just want get views, stay relevant. That don't mean that he it wasn't enough for him. Maybe he just loved making content. Like that's like saying Kai Sinet, every time he do a new Twitch stream with a new celebrity or like play a new game and have a whole setup. It's like saying that the stuff he accomplished already is not enough for him. No, it's just he enjoyed making content. He won't put out the best content, so he just keep dropping new things. But that don't mean that he not satisfied with what he did so far. He released music under the Elias Bach Lava Boy, but seeing how his master Uwe persona was getting more and more attention online, he started to release music under the persona Young Uwe and Master Uwe to help promote it. The way he created songs was very, very strategic. They were made so that they could be used very easily for his meme format of videos. He would feature these songs in almost every single one of his memes to help promote the song. And the songs worked really well with the videos, but they only did so much to actually promote the music.
the music videos would get a couple hundred thousand views and even on Spotify he would also get a couple hundred thousand plays. And this is pretty good for a musician but not as good as you think. Considering he's getting billions of views across these platforms and that's the most amount his music did, it shows that it's not really good enough to stand on its own. And if you heard the music yourself, you'd see why- I mean, I don't know bro, it's like, it, like, of course your subscribers not gonna listen to your music, like majority of them. They don't watch you for music, they watch you for funny racist content, so that's like, I don't know, I low-key feel like this dude just trying to hate on Master Uwe. I'm not defending him or nothing. But I'm just saying, it seems like this dude just trying to make everything sound negative. Like, of course, if this man is a YouTube Shorts creator and get millions of views, of course, only a couple thousand people going to actually listen to his music consistently. Like, that's just common sense. He making it seem like, I don't know, bro. He tripping why it's not very popular. But regardless though, this was still good for Uguay. Between the streams and all the views he was getting, he was making a very, very good income. But that would start to crash down in late 2023. Uguay revealed that his channel was demonetized from YouTube and could not earn any money from them. The main reason being that they found his content to be unoriginal, which it was for the most part. He was literally just taking other people's videos and adding his chat face reaction to it. It's not exactly original. And it's obvious he wasn't even posting these himself. YouTube does not really permit people who do unoriginal content to join the partner program. And Uguay did not take this very lightly. Soon after, Uguay tried to make the claim that they demonetized him because he supported Palestine, mostly because a couple days before he got demonetized, he posted a video about his friend being stuck in Gaza. And while some people may have fallen for this, it's very unlikely that's actually true. Uguay knows that what he did was unoriginal. The formula for reposting other people's videos while reacting to it can be a very successful formula that can get you good views. Bro, what about watching right now? It's seen as pretty cheap because most of the people time make people videos are not about very anything. original they or unique a, about it unless what you surgery? add actually adds a lot to the video. Because other than that, it's just pumping out brain rot non-stop. When a channel usually gets demonetized, it's really only the one channel that gets affected, not the others, assuming those other channels have not broken any guidelines. So from what we're seeing, it doesn't seem like his other channels were demonetized, even though they were also doing the exact same thing. But I could be wrong. But Uguay was so distraught over the demonetization that he posted an entire video claiming that he's going to quit altogether. But not even two days later, he posted another video where he claimed that he talked to YouTube representatives directly and he was now able to get monetized. Now you think that maybe he would reflect I'm on- a I ain't gonna lie, all this probably was captain. That was all a publicity stunt on the events and possibly even change the style of content so that he wouldn't get into situations like this again. Well, you'd be wrong. He kept with his usual style of clickbaiting videos to try and get people to watch his long form while still continuing with the exact same style. <laughs> That's crazy work. <laughs> That's crazy work. Style of short form. Nothing has changed. And while his views were going up and his music was doing decently well, it still wasn't enough for Uguay. The thing about Uguay's style is that he has to constantly be relevant on shock value in order to be relevant. And when it comes to using that style, you usually have to get more and more controversial each time in order to retain your audience because usually what you initially did for shock value isn't really as shocking the fourth or fifth time. And with that being said, Uguay could not keep I mean, doing clickbait videos anymore to try and make people think that he said the n-word and posted a video where he actually said the n-word i'm gonna say it for the first time in my life properly now obviously <laughs> i censored that part because that's crazy the fact that he thought he was gonna get away with this shame on you master Uguay. I don't want to play it. Uguay at this point was now jumping on thin ice. And the response to this was still pretty divided. People were shocked to see that it wasn't clickbait and the rest of the people just didn't really find it funny. But regardless, this video still did more views than his last one. And to Uguay, all views are good views. But at the same time, he started to recognize that he was getting more controversy Bro, than no he so expected. And so he addressed all. the dark humor jokes by suggesting maybe the audience was racist for assuming that he was talking about a specific group of people. Obviously, this didn't go very well trying to pull the well maybe you're the i ain't gonna lie trying to manipulate millions of people might be the stupidest thing you can ever do bro because there's just some people that you can't use wordplay on so the fact that he thought he was gonna be able to flip the script on millions of people and get away with it this guy's not that smart
racist one for assuming I'm talking about a specific race is not a very good way to respond to harsh criticism. It comes off as a very terrible attempt to take responsibility because that's what it was. But regardless, Uguay had to keep up the momentum to keep the views coming, and it was time to step it up even further with the music. So he dropped a song titled Adolf Hitler is my fella. Fella obviously is not the real word here. The song alone ruined Uguay's reputation as it made him come off as a desperate clout chief. Hold up. The song alone. That's kind of crazy how you blurred out the word right here, but didn't blur it out right here. That's crazy. Alone ruined Uguay's reputation as it made him come off as a desperate clout chaser. And Bro, probably be up at late at night wondering, like, dang, what's the most controversial video I could do next? I know Adolf Hitler is my Negro. That'll get the people talking. At this point, all of the other YouTubers were completely sick of his shit, and eventually, one by one, multiple creators started calling him out. As a creator whose audience primarily comes from YouTube shorts, this is giving our community a horrible representation. I mean, the fact that people are making TikToks- Our making community? There's a YouTube shorts community? Never knew that. I thought it was just a bunch of people posting random stuff. I never knew there was actually a community for that. That's kind of crazy. ...fun of YouTube shorts because of you and a couple other creators. We really need to fix that. This right here is the deadliest symptom of YouTube shorts. I mean, bro, let's be honest here. As a YouTube shorts creator, you're not going to get respect. So I, I don't even know why they're trying to argue this. Like, bro, nobody respects a YouTube shorts creator. Like, if you tell somebody you're a YouTuber and did show them your channel and it's strictly YouTube shorts, they're not going to consider you a real YouTuber. YouTube don't even pay that well for YouTube shorts. You are so far beyond I would going never want to be a... I, would, I don't understand why people solely want to do YouTube charts. That's probably the worst type of YouTuber out there. You literally not making no cheese from that. Like, no cap. And I know some people don't do it for the money, but bro, let's be honest here. 50... Bro, every person who does YouTube is doing it for the money at, certain, at some point. Maybe not 100% for the money, but the money is definitely a major factor in why they chose to be a YouTuber. And YouTube, YouTube charts, not the way to go. Right, universe, then you decide, you know what? Now's my time to start just being racist because extra views, extra money, and my ego is so big, I don't even care what offends people anymore. So it's not like this is some immature kid who actually finds this stuff funny. It's a grown adult who genuinely just wants views and attention, and he has no talent to actually make content. It's kind of funny because Orange Peanut used to make content similar to him. And now he's talking about him. So he's just making the most scumbaggy videos that appeal to people with less than 10 brain cells. From making slightly edgy jokes to just straight up using the N-word. Okay, I know this guy is not talking. Ain't this the same person that'd be like, um, I'll do a push-up for every like this video get and then don't even do it? Like, he has no room to talk. Songs and videos in only a matter of years. And it only took that long for his fans to start catching on to just how horrible and repetitive his- Wait, don't are. he make the same exact type content? Am I tripping? Bro, I know I'm not tripping. I'm pretty sure he made a video titled, My Opinion on the LGB Community. Like, no cap. I know I'm not tweeting. If you don't know who Master Ugwe is, he's essentially a YouTube shorts creator who just posts, like, oversaturated memes and death. Recently, however, this dude's gone completely nuts. He's gone batshit insane. Full too bad cosplay. Instead of posting Brain Rot Slop, he's just got schizo. Many of the that? creators believe that Ugwe was taking the whole racist standpoint way too far and now was giving all of the creators a bad look for it. Rather than maybe apologizing or admitting that he was in the wrong or taking accountability, Ugwe went on a complete... Twitter spiral where he responded to almost every single <laughs> bro put a Kanye West no cap Apply and bro said I'm not gonna admit that I'm wrong I'm gonna just go off on everybody who said that I'm wrong comment which just made him look more and more desperate he then started posting pictures of other creators who were also canceled for saying the n-word like PewDiePie iDubbbz and Keemstar claiming if they can be forgiven so can he and it got to the point where see but the thing is they didn't just necessarily say the word Strictly for views and to get a rise out of people. You said it just to get people mad. They said it while they were talking because, let's be honest here, every human says the N-word, white or black, behind closed doors. So let's be honest. Them people, they, it just slipped out because they say it off camera. You deliberately said it just to make people mad. That's the difference between them two situations.
where he started even posting more controversial people like Logan Paul and Kim Jong Il, also claiming that if they can be forgiven, so can he. And this made him Did seem he say even Kim Jong Il. Jong -il also that boy said Kim Jong Il. That is not his name. Claiming that if they can be forgiven, so can he. And this made him seem even more desperate because he was basically claiming that if these people can do terrible things, then so can I. Which still made him seem unremorseful. He even tried posting a picture with man like Isaac claiming that this was proof he wasn't racist. Basically using the, hey, I'm not racist, my friend is black card. But even man- I'm not gonna lie, that's the first thing racist people say. And like Isaac himself could not defend what Uguay did, posting a video saying that he did not approve of the song. I personally told him, bro, I don't think you should release it. But then again, you guys know how he is. He doesn't give a shit. And considering Isaac was also into pretty dark humor, that says a lot. Uguay then tried to further defend himself that he was just simply an actor playing a role, like how Leonardo DiCaprio played the racist slave owner in Dijon. This man really trying to finesse his way out of all these situations instead of just admitting that he, he did something stupid, bro. Like, just say that you did something wrong. This nigga really trying to argue and, and manipulate and use wordplay. Like, bro, no, you're racist. You did something racist. Just admit it, bro, and move on. Django You're not an actor, he bro. was simply playing a racist person. Trying to compare yourself to a person who played a character made to represent history is just simply another poor attempt to try and defend yourself. None of this was working, so Ugwe decided to release an apology through the form of a song. Sorry for saying the n-word. This alone already is pretty bad. But the worst part about it is that after the two minutes of the half-assed apology, he just straight up says the n-word right at the end of the song, doubling down on everything. But in the midst of the controversy, he continued with his usual style. Considering he never learned from his mistakes before, he probably assumed that he was invincible. But he'd be completely wrong, because a couple days later, all of his channels on YouTube would get completely banned. Multiple channels with several million subscribers. Good job, YouTube. Y'all, y'all, y'all did a good job with that. But see, please don't give me another strike on my channel, bro, YouTube. I promise I'm on my best behavior now. I'm not even cursing that much in this video. So I don't want any more strikes. I don't want no beef with y'all YouTube. Feel me? I just stay on good terms, bro. No cap. Peppers and billions of views each gone in an instance. Surprising? Not really. If anything, it's a little shocking that he only got demonetized initially as a punishment and only had one video taken down. But Uwe couldn't fathom the possibility of maybe the fact that he was in the wrong and took to Twitter to blame the ban on spam reporters. While he thought that maybe he could gain some type of sympathy this way, he got the exact opposite. The YouTube community was throwing confetti and celebrating over the fact that he was off the platform. I mean, Uwe getting banned was basically the equivalent to YouTube Christmas. There was not a single single person that was upset that he was gone. Well, maybe except a couple edgy 12 year olds, but everyone was pretty happy. And personally, I do see why he was banned. As a Jewish man myself, I genuinely don't think Uguay is anti-Semitic and I don't really get the impression that he's racist. I'll be the first to say that I say extremely fucked up stuff, like really, really fucked up stuff. But I- What's an example? <laughs> Give us an example next time. I won't know what he'd be saying behind closed doors say all of that stuff off camera because I say it in a place where I know it's not going to negatively affect people in any type of way. And I'm not an exception because you're- That's crazy. But at least he honest, bro, because we all know people say things behind closed doors. But I want to know what he be saying, though. Your creator does it, your idol does it, and even you do it as well. If everyone said every single thing that they said, then everybody would get canceled. The difference here is that Uguay is- Nah, but see, that's the thing, though. If everybody was to speak their mind, there would be no such thing as canceling, because you can't cancel everybody. So canceling would be non-existent, if you really think about it. Simply saying whatever he feels is going to get him as much views as possible without really understanding the consequences of his actions. However, that still does not make it okay. Saying these type of things on a big platform can have a very negative effect on people and does come at the cost of certain groups. Considering his fans are young, impressionable children, this is not very good. Having a big platform means having a responsibility and Uguay took advantage of that. YouTube guidelines do get a lot of criticism for their strict policies, but something you don't see very often is people getting unrightfully banned. YouTube will very rarely ever actually remove someone completely from their website allowing them to make a new account so if someone does get banned most of the time it's probably justified. And from what I've personally seen banning Uguay was a reasonable decision on their part. This isn't some edgy high school kid who's making these edgy jokes for some attention it's a grown man who's trying to make money off of the expense of other people. And trying to blame it on spam haters rather than maybe reflecting on your actions and taking 
seeking accountability tells you all you need to know about this man's character and his intentions. If there's anything that should be learned here, it's that using controversy to get views and likes is not a price worth paying. Because whether it's in a month, a year, or a decade from now, Uguay will look back at this and regret what he's done. Um, that's debatable. He clearly has no remorse or self-shame. I don't think that he's going to regret anything he did in his life, bro. <laughs> like, no cap. Like, what he's doing right now, he probably is, he probably is, um, extremely 100% proud of himself. He, he definitely has no shame in his game. No cap. But, that was the video how Master Uwe became the most hated YouTuber. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Y'all feel like, um, the ban was right? Y'all think YouTube should have banned him? Or y'all think people just can't take a joke? Me personally, um... Mm, me personally, I don't really care what people say on the internet, so I really don't care if he would have got banned or not. But you know, some people live for the internet and stuff like that really get under their skin. And, and, and So yeah, but let me know th your thoughts down in the comments. As always, make sure you stay tuned for more reactions. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Other than that, it's Buck Kendall. I'm gone.